Advanced Algebra Chapter 13 Lesson 3 and before I introduce or work on some quadrantal angles we want to talk a little bit about something we call the unit circle and the unit circle allows us to do some very interesting and applicational things with uh, trigonometric functions and we'll discover or we'll deal uh, more in depth with those uh, next year in pre-calculus but for our purposes this year we want to use the unit circle to help us find the sine and cosine of quadrantal angles and it's already helped us with the other angles we just hadn't really talked about how that works but we'll get more in depth next year but really quickly what is the unit circle the unit circle is a circle that has a radius of 1. And so if we put the unit circle on the coordinate plane, it allows us to determine four coordinates. Because this radius is a 1, I can determine the coordinate of this point to be 1. That's the length of the radius, 0. And because all radii are equal, I can determine the coordinate of this point, which would be 0, and then up 1 because this length is 1. And then this coordinate over here is negative 1 and then 0. And then the coordinate of this point is 0, negative 1. So placing the unit circle on the coordinate grid gives us these points, which we're going to need to use our, uh, to determine the sine and cosine of our quadrantal angles. So this is the unit circle. So let's see how this applies then or helps us with these quadrantal angles. Advanced Algebra Chapter 13 Lesson 3 and I want to take a look at quadrantal angles and how we determine the sine and cosine of these types of angles. You remember from the previous video that we were drawing reference triangles, that we would determine where the terminal side falls, and then we draw a reference triangle by drawing a vertical line to the x-axis. We then figure the measure of this uh, central angle, and then use our reference triangles. In this video, I want to look at quadrantal angles, because something, I don't know, interesting or kind of troublesome happens in trying to use that method. Quadrantal angles, you remember, are angles where the denominator, at least in radian measure, are angles where the denominator is a 2 or a 1. And what happens in that case is that the terminal side falls on one of these axes. It either falls on you know, uh, the positive x or the positive y or the negative x and negative y. And the problem with using reference triangle in this case is that you can't make a triangle. If the terminal side falls on this axis and I try to draw a line vertically to the x-axis, well, I end up drawing a line on top of the x-axis, or the y-axis, excuse me, there's no triangle formed, so there's no way to use a reference triangle. Same thing happens if you fall on the x-axis. You can't draw a vertical line to the x-axis because there'd be no line. You're already there. So reference triangles in this case aren't possible. So how do we determine the sine and the cosines in this case? Well, we're going to use uh, our knowledge of the unit circle. We talked a little bit about this previously, that a unit circle is a circle, and sorry for my dry, where the radius is a 1, meaning the distance from here to here is 1, the distance from here to here is 1, the distance from here to here is 1, and the distance from here to here is 1. So because all of these are 1, I can, uh, or I know then, the coordinates of each one of these points. So this point would have a coordinate of 1, 0. This would have a coordinate of 0, 1. This point has a coordinate of negative 1, 0. And this point has a coordinate of 0, negative 1. So using the unit circle allows me to determine the values of each one of these points. Now, next year we'll go a little bit deeper in pre-calculus and why this works, So, but for right now, Here's what you need to memorize or to know. As you look at an x value and a y value on a unit circle, what you want to understand is that the x value, let's do it this way, x value, the x value is actually the cosine of the angle. Okay? And the y value is the sine of the angle. Okay? And we'll talk more about these other ones that we've done in the past, about how and why those are the x and the y value of these points. So when you fall on a quadrantal angle, here's what you want to remember. The cosine is the x, and the sine is the y. So if I have a terminal 
side that ends up on this axis, what is the cosine of that angle? Well, it's simply the x value of this coordinate. So the cosine is 0. What would be the sine of this angle? Well, it's simply the y value of the coordinate, or 1. Okay, so basically what this comes down to is remembering cosine relate or is the x, sine relates to or is the y. So like we did on the other examples then, all we have to do is find out where does the terminal side fall, and if it falls on a quadrantal angle, I'm just going to use the coordinate of that point, which I know because I'm talking about a radius of 1, and I'm simply going to use the x value to be the cosine and the y value to be the sine. So let's take a look at an example or two. Now uh, let's leave that over there for right now. So here, what would be the sine of pi over 2? Well, pi over 2 is the same thing that we talked about before. It's a 90 degree angle because the denominator is a 2, so it's going to fall on the axis. And I have one of them, so pi over 2 is 90, so pi over 2, the terminal side falls on here. What is the sine? I can't create a triangle, so I use the coordinate of that point. The coordinate of this point is 0, 1. The sine relates to the y value, so the y value is 1. So the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Okay, so anytime we fall on a quadrantal angle, it's going to um, be a coordinate of 0 or 1 or negative 1. Let me do a few more examples for you here. I'm going to erase all this here. I think I have one more, or I have another one on this. Go up here. No. Okay. Um, so what would be, let's just make some up here, what would be the cosine of 7 pi over 2 then? Okay, well, the pi over 2, because it's a denominator of 2, I know right away it's going to fall on one of the axes, all right? And I can simply count the axes going around because there's 2 in half a circle, 1 and 2. So all I have to do is just start on my x-axis and count an axis until I get up to 7. So like we did before, because it's a pi over 2, I know it's a quadrantal angle, and I need 7 of them going in the counterclockwise direction. So starting here, here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 pi over 2 ends up here. The coordinate of this point is 0, negative 1. So the cosine relates to the x value, so that would be 0. So the cosine of 7 pi over 2 is 0. Let's do uh, another one. Let's do, um, well, I don't know, uh, sine of negative 13 pi. Okay? Now, here's where you got to be a little bit careful because this isn't a denominator of, uh, of 2, it's a denominator of 1. I am going in the clockwise direction, and I need 13 pi. Well, remember, pi is half a circle, and I need 13 of them. So I need 13 half circles, and I need to go in the clockwise directions. So 1, half a circle, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13 ends up right here. Okay, 13 half circles puts me on this axis. And because it's a quadrantal angle, I just take the coordinate of this point, whoops, not zero. The coordinate of this point is negative one, zero. I want the sine, the sine is the y value of this point, and that's a zero, so the sine of negative 13 pi is zero. Okay, one more example for you and then we'll wrap this up. In the last, uh, number 9 over here, actually I'll do two more examples. Number 9 here, I have the cosine of a 0 degree angle. Well, that's interesting. How do you have a 0 degree angle? Well, remember, the trigonometric angles start on the x-axis. A 0 degree angle would mean I wouldn't move at all, so I'm on the x-axis. So because it's a quadrantal angle, 
I use the coordinate of this point. This point is 1, 0. The cosine is the x value. The x value is 1, so the cosine of a 0 degree angle is 1. Okay? One final example. I know I said one more example, but I decided to do one more. Um, oh, I don't know. What do you think? Let's do cosine of negative 8 pi over 2. Okay, now this one's interesting because you can do a couple things if you want. Pi over 2 tells me that it's a 90 degree angle and I need 8 of them and I need to go in the clockwise direction. Now you could reduce that to 4 pi and so that would be 4 half circles if you wanted to do that. Either way, as long as you go in the correct direction and you have 8 90 degree angles. So let's do 8 90 degree angles because that's an axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I end up back here on the x-axis. Because I'm on the axis, it's a quadrantal angle. I use the coordinate of this point. The coordinate of this point is 1, 0. The cosine is the x value of this point. The x value of this point is 1. So the cosine of negative 8 pi over 2 is 1. Okay, so that's how you handle the quadrantal angles. Because they fall on the x-axis or y-axis, you can't create the reference triangles that we used in the other ones, but there is a way to handle that by using what we know about the unit circle and the coordinates of those points. And so uh, handling quadrantal angles now should be no problem for you at all.